Police in England and Wales today begin a seven-day blitz on knife crime. In Operation Scepter, officers will carry out weapon sweeps and target habitual blade carriers. But does one man have a much simpler solution after being stabbed nine times? Our next guest took the extraordinary step of offering people vouchers in exchange for their weapons, then handed them in to the police. Well, Farron Paul joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. So this seems an unlikely solution, right? In other words, why would somebody who's carrying a knife mm. give it up just for a voucher? And yet it's proved to be quite successful. Tell us about yeah. why you decided to do this and how it's been working. Just a little bit back. I got stabbed nine times twice. So I've been stabbed 18 times. <sighs> two separate occasions. So yeah. two, two different times you were stabbed and each time nine, nine times. Nine times, yeah. How did you survive being stabbed nine times twice? The first one weren't too bad, but the second one, the 40% blood loss, the brachial plexus injury, the comatosis for two days. Oh, my goodness. Um, so you nearly died? Yeah, severe we uh, muscle wastage, delayed sensory analysis, you know, like... I had to learn how to even tie my shoelaces again, man, like... And, what, and let me ask you, then, so who, who did this to you? Oh, it was just... Random, it's random. Gang? Gang-related? Never, ever. It was um, between an argument, like, someone had an argument with my sister, I defended her, and then another one, someone had an argument with my girlfriend, and I defended her. I mean, like, it's like women in my life, you know, it's just like... So it's a I'm... revenge attack for you standing up for <laughs> someone in your... I wouldn't even call it revenge. Life. I just call it an altercation that went wrong. Mm. Like, just but like in that. fairly inconsequential stuff, but very consequential yeah. result, which was yeah, that you got... Yeah, yeah, you nearly got killed, right? Yeah, yeah. What did this compel you to do then? You, you decided to do something to well, try and first, change this. At first, it come, like, I was very like, lost, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know what to do with myself, man. Like, mm. Emotionally, mentally, physically, like, I was in a really bad place. And it, it, it ain't just now that I've got to this position. It's took many, many years, like mm. over a decade, yeah, to be strong enough. Like, I lost self-confidence, I lost my athletic courage, you know what I mean? Like, it took a lot for me to get back to the position that I couldn't feel comfortable enough to even want to take photos and look at myself in the mirror again. So. I just believe that when I was at a certain age, if I had a, that, the right amount of guidance and stuff, mm. then maybe I wouldn't have been in certain positions. What to... age were you when you got stabbed? So I got stabbed in 2000, and I'm 33 now, mm. so I got stabbed in 2000 once, and then another down in 2006. Mm. So you were a teenager? Yeah, I was a baby, man. I, I... When, you see, when you see what's going on now, right, mm -hmm. and in London it's predominantly young black teenage boys mm -hmm. attacking other young black teenage boys, right? That's in London. In, in Scotland, it was white boys, but right? But no so... worst thing, yeah? Can I say, sorry to cut you, man. Um, just out of mind, because literally what I'm doing, I've literally got, like, a little statistics. I swear to you, yeah, I'm not calling no race cards. Like, so out of ten people, seven of the, the guys would be of Caucasian. Do you understand? That's mm -hmm. what the crazy, crazy nice. I don't mean... I don't know if that means the black people ain't handing their knives as much, mm. or it means that... Of your scheme, you mean? Yeah, of my scheme, personally, mm. like, nothing else, but what I've been seeing, like, I've got... So yeah. more white boys are handing yeah. in knives yeah. to you than black yeah, boys. So Why is that, do you so think? So what I'm trying to say, yeah, it's not any particular colour of a problem. Mm. It's a community problem. Mm. It's, it's, it's everyone's problem, mm. do you know what I'm saying? No, no, all, all, no, just to clarify that, statistically, mm -hmm. purely on the statistics, mm -hmm. in London right now, it, the vast majority of attackers and victims of knife murders, mm -hmm. right, happen to be black. Can right I now. say something, though? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I say one thing? So, every, media, um, every mainstream media platform in a week yeah, has presented my story. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no confusion to what I do. Mm -hmm. But this morning I got up here with over 100 messages and I've been put in a newspaper with a story where someone's... Um, saying that this thugs, um, the system's too lenient on these thugs. Mm. Do you understand? So I do think that the media, that they do put a bit of pressure and portray black people in, in, in the sort so of way. So your photograph's been used, you mean, with a yeah, story... Yeah, I've got it right here, right, right now. ...that says that you're yeah. part of the problem rather than part yeah, of the solution. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Right. So, well, this is very frustrating for you, because you are it's, actually... Mate, it's not frustrating. It's minor to me, because I know what's going on. Mm. Yeah. But I'm saying these are the little miscommunications it's in the like media. It's racial profile yeah, like, of who is responsible. It's just so easy yeah. for someone to take any black guy with a knife and say, ah, oh, slap it into a bad story. Mm. Yes. And that person probably even looked like, mate, listen, I've been... Like, do you know what I mean? I've been out here on every media platform and you haven't, mm. you haven't had the, the, enough diligence to check that you've mm. just done... Right, well, that like. wasn't... Obviously, we didn't do this. But what, what I would say is this, is that in Scotland, they had a massive knife problem, but right? But Scotland's crazy. You know it is. Um, no, no, let me finish there. my question. Yeah. In Scotland, it was predominantly white kids doing to white mm -hmm. kids, right? In London, for whatever reason, and I'm not making these stats up, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the moment, there seems to be a particular problem with young black boys who are... It's the areas, though, isn't it? So to explain to me what's going like, on. Come on, you're talking about Hackney, you're talking about Tottenham, you're talking about Woolwich, you're talking about Peckham. Right. They're predominantly black areas. Right. 
So you're going to see predominantly black But why are they using knives to attack and stab each other? Because, Explain to me. Because they can't get guns. Like, what, like, what, like, what are you going to do? Run down the road fighting each other with fist fight? Like, in, like, you see America, yeah? The difference is, in America, you're going to have a lot of shootings because mm -hmm. there's gun laws and there's gun shops and there's people that own guns and this person's house is going to get broken into and right. that shop gets robbed. So everyone's got, got access to... But we made a five-year prison listen, sentence in this country if you were caught with a gun. So people stop using guns. Why should we not, say, make though. it a five-year sentence for kids I, with knives? I, I, Piers, listen, yeah? When, when the law says you can have a machete in your house and it's not illegal, yeah? Right. Then how can you fix it? Because Hang on, I thought having a machete in your house was illegal because no, it's of legal. You're allowed to have you're allowed to have any knife in your house. But you can't take them on the street. You can't take them on the street. Mm. But, but how hard do is it? They have how hard is it to get into an altercation and be emotional and run at the house with a machete? So tell me what the solutions are here. I just believe early intervention in schools. I believe talking to these children. They need nurturing. And if you could talk to the young you, mm -hmm. right, when you were caught up in all this. Uh -huh. What would you say to yourself that would make a difference? Mate, you, you get one chance, yeah? And sometimes you've got to, like, embrace your chance and just don't, like, just don't get stuck on other people's influences, you know what I mean? Live your own life, man. You Idr like Idris that, Elba... Well, I want to play Idris Elba clip here, mm -hmm. right? Idris Elba... Have we got the clip of Idris Elba? Because he actually said a very similar thing. And I thought it was a very powerful thing that he did over the weekend. Watch this. Knife crime is not new, yeah? I grew up in the 80s and there was knife crime back then between blacks and whites, and now it's definitely between young black men in small, tiny communities, and it's affecting everyone. We all look stupid. We need to just vocalise this, send a message out saying, put the knives down, it's done, all right? It's done. We don't need to be killing ourselves. We have so much more we can offer, and you're going to kill your future, you're going to kill someone else's future. Bruv, flip it, like, what bruv, do you make of that? I think it's great, man, like, because he's got a big platform mm. and he's using it in the right way, do you understand? And if people can, like, if the young children can see, yeah, that it's not only negative stuff, yeah, that can prevail you into good positions, yeah, mm. then maybe they'll start doing it as well, do you understand? Mm. Like, I, I Tell just... us about your voucher scheme idea. Oh, man, like, um, so I... You see these knives, yeah? Our children ain't little blacksmiths, are they? Sitting down making knives in sheds, are they? So they're clearly getting it from somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you're getting it from somewhere, you're using money to get them, innit? So I'm thinking, why are you going to want to give me your knives for free? Here's an incentive. But then I thought, if I walk around giving people money, I'm only going to be opening myself up to criticism. People are, oh, they're going to take the money and mm -hmm. buy drugs and knives. So I said, OK, vouchers. JD Sports, this, that. And you do it through GoFund. Uh, yeah, but, but... GoFund me suspending my thing, man, so... Right. So where are you getting the money for it now? Um, it's just people like me. I I've spent three hundred pounds to take thirty knives. Mm. And people pounds. are handing them in. Yeah, some people don't even want their own vouchers no more. Three hundred pounds for thirty knives. Do you approach knives. people, or do they you... approach me? Oh, Look, if right. you go through my phone, I've got like three hundred messages right now. And people say I want to hand in my knife. Do you want to see one? Yeah. Well, yeah. or is it they want to sell you their knives? No, but some people want to hand it in. The last guy said to me, um, I've walked around with my knife for the last four years, hoping to see the person that's killed my brother, because when I see him, I'm going to kill him. Right. So it's, it, it's more deeper than, oh, oh, it's a fashion. There's some people that's got a deep yes. hate and... But they want to relieve themselves Yeah, they want to relieve themselves, but they're scared as well. Pressure. Like, for instance, I can't talk too much, yeah, but you're going to see it soon, because I've done something with Ross Kemp, yeah? And, mate, listen, they just be... I think they... There needs to be better facilities, yeah? Mm. Mm for disposing and yeah. more confidentiality and trust between... Well, I remember when I ran the Daily Mirror, we ran a knife amnesty, and yeah. it was actually very successful. And I think a lot of knives were handed in. But in do you know why? Um, um, where did you run that through? Daily Mirror. But that's why. It's because it's not the police. I'm not trying to slag the police off, but there's a different yeah. um, trust yeah. with the... Do you know what I'm saying, Piers? Yeah. Yeah, man. That's... Listen, I think it's a conversation that's got to keep taking place. I admire you for turning your life Can around and trying to make a yeah, One thing, yeah. yeah. Mm. Out of all the people, you see, that there's two sets of people, yeah? It's called Young Mav, yeah? Um, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's an anti-knife charity, yeah? Mm. They've reached out to me. They've offered me body protection and a storage. And, and the local authority of Enfield Council, yeah? They've actually given me a park for a whole year mm -hmm. that we're going to open as a bike park. And I just want to say, just for that opportunity there, it's been so much to me. It's been such a motor, motor drive, yep. motor fist. So shout-outs to everyone. Mm. If I never got to shout, yeah, love and respect to you lot. Love, respect to you. All right, mate. Well, listen, it's that. good to see you. Let's yeah. stay in touch. Keep Done going it. with the good work. And yes. this is all part of a national conversation that has Let's to be go. had. Let's go. Let's go. Farron Paul, thanks very much. Good to see you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Yes. OK, he's off. Yeah. Yeah. He's got work to do. That's my kind of guest. <laughs> <laughs> Job done. <laughs> Boom. <I'm> gone. <laughs> gone. Farron's not mucking around. He's got work to do. He's got yeah, knives yes. to collate. And good luck to him. Yeah, quite right. Uh, at least um, he's making a difference. And uh, I applaud that.